Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I'm going to teach you how you can build a simple Ktor REST API. If you don't know what Ktor is, that is a Kotlin only backend framework, which is really cool. It combines all these uh, cool Kotlin language features like extension functions, coroutines, all that stuff into one backend. And if you love Kotlin, you will love Ktor, I promise you. In this video, I just want to show you how to build a simple API with that. You can already see a little bit. We're going to build a rabbits API. So essentially, this API will just serve us with some rabbit images that you can choose with some information about these rabbits. And we can click on a new rabbit to get um, information about a, about a new rabbit, about a random rabbit. Um, I think it just shows, yeah, the same rabbit again. You can see we have some, some other rabbits here. We can actually uh, click through and yeah, you feel free to <laughs> extend this list of rabbits. I only have five rabbits in here and the API will just um, respond with a random one of these. So I will show you everything here, how you can uh, build the API that responds with that and also how to build the Android app here using Jetpack Compose to actually display that and uh, retrieve the data using Retrofit. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. And we're going to start building the API. The API isn't built in Android Studio. Instead, we built it in IntelliJ. That is also a JetBrains IDE. And I think most of you will have it. If you don't have it, um, you can simply just Google IntelliJ download. So let's just do that. IntelliJ download. Download IntelliJ. And yeah, you just want to download this community edition that is free. Um, you got to set it up with the JDK. If you need a tutorial for that, um, I won't show you in this in this video, but you can check the first, I think the first video or the, or the second video of my Kotlin UBT Pro playlist in which I actually, actually show how you can set up this IDE. If you've done that, if you have installed IntelliJ IDEA, you want to go to, you want to open a new browser tab and you want to go to start.ktor.io. Because Ktor projects have some specifics and a specific uh, project structure kind of, um, we kind of need a project generator for that. In the past, there was a plugin in, in, in IntelliJ um, with which we could easily create that project. That plugin still exists, but it is marked as obsolete, so I wouldn't use that anymore. Or if you actually have access to IntelliJ Ultimate, the paid version, but as a student, you get access for free, I think, um, then you can also use that because in that ultimate edition, the uh, project generator for Kato is already integrated as far as I know. But I only have the community edition, so we can uh, just use this free website to generate our project and then simply open it in IntelliJ. So let's go through this step by step. First of all, our project name. Well, that is pretty obvious what we need to enter here. Just something like Kator rabbits and then we can extend this here and click adjust project settings and we can uh, we can actually set up a little bit more first of all we can choose a build system so from android you know gradle groovy uh, but for ktor i like to choose the the kotlin dsl version of gradle which is just a little bit cooler it's more kotlin-ish um, or we could also choose maven but i like these two more because i'm used to these um, from android apps then the website um that's basically just the the first part of your package name in android so you can just say plcoding.com for example and then you can see this is how your package will end up being called you can choose a ktor version um, which you should just choose the latest one here you can choose an engine here which is netty and yeah you can choose some others the engine is basically what drives ktor so if you know retrofit, then for retrofit, the engine would kind of be uh, OK HTTP, what makes the actual network requests, but retrofit is a layer on top of OK HTTP that just makes everything easier. And it's the same way with Ktor and uh, these engines. So these engines do the actual work behind the scenes, but Ktor is just a framework on top of that that we can easily use to um, actually yeah, build our backend. And we can choose configuration in. And right now it says Hocon file. Maybe it says code for you. So there are two different ways we can actually uh, put our server configuration in. On the one hand, that is such a Hocon file. Um, it's, it's very similar to JSON, just a very JSON-ish style of defining um, configurations. Or you could simply put it in your Kotlin code. 
I like the token file, so I would advise you to choose the same if you want to follow along. And then we're actually not done yet. Because you can see there is an add plugins button. I'm going to click that. So what are these plugins? Ktor is almost fully built with these plugins. So these plugins kind of allow us specific backend behavior that we typically want to use in backend frameworks. So you can see we can uh, we can just see all the, the available plugins here. For example, authentication. So if you want to have some authentication mechanisms like a uh, logging in users, like distinguishing between uh, normal users and admins, then you want to add some plugins here from security. You can simply click add and then it will be included in your Kator uh, service setup. If you don't do that, then of course you can still add this later. This will basically just add a dependency and some default setup. And you can also do that later if you encounter that you forgot something or that you just need something else here. Um, so you can add sessions, auto, had responses, all that stuff. What we want is routing, of course. So routing just allows us to define routes at which we respond with something, in our case, with the rabbit data. Then we also want to add static content. That means we have some static files that we already know. Um, we don't need, need to know these, but we have some, some real, real files that we actually want to respond with at certain routes. So that is typically for using or responding with images. You can respond with any files, also text files, PDFs, but we use it here to display images. So our app can actually call a specific route like a local host or a port slash rabbit.jpg and actually access the image there. So we click add as well. Um, you can, yeah, we don't need status pages. That is used to simply throw an exception in your code and your your server will automatically respond with a certain exception. So you could, for example, throw an unauthorized exception somewhere in your route and then Kato will automatically res respond with the unauthorized um, HTTP status code. Very useful, but we don't need it here. We need content negotiation. That is used for JSON parsing. Um, so that when we respond with a Kotlin data class, it will automatically be um, parsed to a JSON. Um, default headers, you can include that. You don't need to. With that, you can just um, yeah attach default headers. So just stuff that will be attached to every single header of every single response your server actually replies with. Mm, we can uh, l let's add call logging. It will just a log whenever a client makes a request to our server so we can see that you can use templating so you can of course also use Kator to respond with CSS or HTML content for making a website and we want to add something for the serialization so that is actually needed by this content negotiation to parse something to JSON we need one of these a Kotlin X serialization JSON or Jackson I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the Kotlin one you have WebSocket plugins here, but that is pretty much everything we need. So when we're done, we can click Generate Project. And you can see it's just downloaded as a zip file. We can now um, actually just open this, not the zip file. Just copy over the zip file into your IntelliJ project directory, extract it there, and then I'm going to see you back here. So I opened my IntelliJ idea, and right now I have my... Um, Twitch stream project open the social network which I also use Ktor for. If you actually want to see how I do that, how I build a bigger app in my Twitch live streams and you often miss these live streams, then you can also um, just join this channel by clicking on this uh, join button down here. That's like a for, for a small fee every month, but then you can uh, get access to all my live stream recordings from the past and in the future. Other than that, let's go to file and we open the project that I just extracted from the zip file. So this is my um, uh, IntelliJ folder and I extracted this k rabbits here. That's the, uh, the, the folder we want to open. Clicking OK, this window. And now our project is being opened and built. So I'll see you when that is done. So there we go. Let's actually explore the k project structure. Um, it's 
a little bit similar to Android, so um, not too different, a little bit. If we open the root folder, we can see that kind of seems a bit familiar. We have we have our build at Gradle KTS file this time. It's the Kotlin version of Gradle. And it's as an Android here, you just have your dependencies. You can see the plugins were automatically added, like uh, serialization, mm, the logging stuff and stuff like that. And yeah, that's just the place where you can configure everything regarding your build. Not important for us here. We don't need any extra dependencies. We want to dive into the source folder main. And now we have Kotlin and resources. Oh, it's not the test one. Kotlin and resources. And the resources folder is the folder in which we put well our resources like the images of the rabbits. So what I will do is I will just copy over these rabbit images Go inside static, new directory, and call it rabbits. And where can you get these rabbits from? Well, you can simply get these from uh, the GitHub repository, a link down below. So you will just see this project structure in this repository. You can download it, and then you will find this rabbits folder in the resources package here with all these images. But as I said, of course, just feel free to, to pick your own rabbits. You can just take one from uh, Google Images or so. Just make sure that that's only for your personal use then, of course. But yeah, now we have these five rabbits in here in a rabbits folder in our static folder. So let's further explore this project structure. We have our Kotlin folder in which we have our application KT file. If we open that, that is the entry point for our program. So what's an Android the main activity? Here in Ktor it is this application file and here we just have the normal main function as we know it from plain Kotlin programs which is not relevant for us so don't modify this here. Um, and we have an application module. So we can also structure our Ktor servers into multiple modules um, in rather simple backends. You only have one which is this one, the application module. and for these modules, you can actually have these configuration functions. And these are actually located in the plugins folder. So depending on which plugins you actually added when you were on that start.kator.io website, um, it just created some default files here. Let's check a monitoring, for example. Mm, you can see it installs the call logging feature, which is only possible if you have the dependency for that, but that was also included. And then you have a Lambda block here in which you can configure that. So how detailed logs do you want? If you want to filter your log messages, you can configure everything regarding call logging in this block. And this now extends this application class, which is why we can simply call it in here. You can see that also extends the application class. That's the cool thing about Ktor. It allows you a lot of freedom where to put your code because everything here could be an extension function. You will also see how that works with our routes later. Um, but that's very cool. You, you are so free in choosing how you structure your projects. Let's check the, the routing.kt file. That is where the routes are defined that our server responds at. So you can see we have a routing block. So now we define and configure the routing feature. And it automatically generated this get request at our root URL. And when we, when actually a client calls this URL, this block is fired off and it responds with some text, hello world. So we can simply launch this now and actually try this out by clicking in application KT and on this green play symbol, click run application KT. And then you can see it launches the server. Um, but you will also see what happens here for me is it throws an exception. It has address already in use. And uh, the issue here is the default port it launches this server on is this one, 8080. That's the typical port for backend services, for website services. But it appears that on my machine, there is already another application running on that specific port, which is why I need to change this. This does not need to happen for you. If there is no application running on your machine on this specific port, it won't crash. But if it does, then you need to change the default port of Ktor. And for that, we have this application config file in your resources package, or 
uh, yeah, in the resources package. Double click that and this is this Hocon file that you have seen in the project generator. Here you just have Kator specific configuration such as this port for example. So we can change this to let's say 8100. Choose any number you like. And if we now relaunch this then this should not crash. And what we can now do is we can go to our browser and we can type HTTP localhost colon 8100 uh, which is the port you've chosen and just press enter and you will see it replies and responds with our hello world code that we have in our routing block here so that was just added by default and you can see how easy it is for us to now respond with stuff so I will actually remove this we don't want this hello world response instead we want a response that gives us a random rabbit so how can we do that um, one thing before that actually I, I forgot the serialization file let's open that nothing special it just installs the content negotiation feature and just calls JSON here this will just set up Kotlin X serialization here on our server but other than that um, you can see how you could respond with that um, so you can just respond with a map of stuff and that will then um, in the end be a JSON response we're not going to use this so we can remove the routing block here and actually right click on our root package create another package called routes and in this routes package we're going to uh, put all of our routes we're only going to have one here we create a file in that routes package called rabbit route and that will be a file so not a class instead we choose a file here and as I said in Ktor almost everything is an extension function not everything but a lot is an extension function also our routes so we can say function route import this io Ktor routing route dot rabbit for example or we can call it random rabbit and in this function we can now configure our route we can uh, determine what we will respond with how this route lo looks like all that stuff first of all what's important is what kind of route is it so if you're familiar with HTTP then you will know there are get requests post requests put requests all that stuff in our case we just have a simple get request here because all we do is we get some data from the server we don't post anything to the server we don't update anything we don't delete anything we just get something so we say get and we're going to choose this overloaded version here of that get function which allows us to define a path and this path will be the route at which we actually access this so slash rabbit for example or again random rabbit random rabbit you can also do it like this let's do it like this and then we open this lambda block and in here this will be called when a client actually accesses this route and well what happens in here you could of course attach some query parameters for get requests so if the client also needs to give you some data for example if the client wants a specific rabbit and you want to find that in your database then you could get some query parameters using call dot parameters for example at rabbit id or so and that would give you the rabbit id if the client attached one but we don't have query parameters here we actually just want to respond with a random rabbit so let's first define what is actually a rabbit and for that I will create a data package here in our root package so data dot let's call it data dot model and in that model package we create a class rabbit that will be a data class and because we want to serialize this class, this class with um, Kotlin serialization, we need to annotate this with seriali serializable actually. So that will just allow us to parse this content of the class to JSON and send it over the network. So each rabbit will have a name. It will have a description, both of type string of course, and it will have an image URL which will be the URL of uh, yeah the image so we can actually access that on our client then we will make use of this rabbit class by defining a list of rabbits that we can possibly 
um, respond with. So we will just have a list of rabbits and then we will pick a random one of these and respond with that. I will actually just put this in our rabbit route um, in a bigger back and of course I would structure this a bit better and I would have maybe a constants file or so um, that contains that. But this is super simple here so I'll leave it like that. First of all we need to think about when we actually construct these rabbits we need to know our base URL or yeah just the, the server URL and the image URLs. So what, what are these? So we can define a private const val base URL and that is just HTTP colon slash slash. And now a lot, a lot of you might think that's just localhost 8100. So just localhost and the port. Because right now we just access our server here on our local machine. Of course that's different if you deploy your backend. And that is usually also correct. If you access that in your browser that will work. But the thing is if you want to access this server on your Android emulator then a local host will refer to the local emulator because localhost for the emulator is the emulator and because on the android emulator there is no server running it won't work so if you actually test this on your android emulator what you need to choose here is 10022 if you um, just do this in your if you test this on your phone on your actual device then you need to put in your local IP address of your computer in here. Um, so you can just open CMD to find that out and enter IP config. And here you will find this um, Ethernet adapter. And you can, see, you can see here is an IPv4 address. This is the local IP address you actually want. You can copy this and you can paste it in here. So this will, if you use this way, then it will also work with your emulator because this is just local to your, uh, to your network at home. So every device that's somehow connected to your router will have such a local IP address. And now I will actually paste my list of rabbits. It's just a list of five rabbits, as you can see. Um, feel free to give these rabbits your own names, <laughs> your own descriptions. But what's important is this image URL here. So you can see for each rabbit, I just attach the base URL slash rabbits, which is this uh, static rabbits folder, and then followed by the rabbit name. Depending on how many rabbits you have, then you need to change the URL accordingly. And now what we can do here in our route is, we can go ahead, we can say call that respond. Um, we're gonna spawn, respond with an okay status code. So just telling the client, hey, your request was okay. And we want to attach some data, and that is just our rabbits list. Not our rabbits list, actually. We want to pick a random one, so rabbits.random. So that will pick a random entry of this list, maybe Carl, maybe Florian, maybe Federico. And it will automatically parse that rabbit to JSON and respond with that JSON string. Right now that function is unused. You need to actually call that in your routing configuration to apply that in your backend. So let's go to routing and in here we can just call random rabbit and that will just make sure that we set up this route. And if we now launch this backend, um, we can check this box and click stop and rerun. Then hopefully nothing will crash for you. You can go to your browser and here you can simply uh, say slash random rabbit, click enter and you can see there's our JSON response and it responds with a random one, this time with Carl, with the corresponding uh, image URL. And if we click on that, um, I'm not sure if that works. Right now that doesn't work because, let's go back to IntelliJ. Um, we actually just need to remove this parentheses here. So what this will now change is that it doesn't um, if, if we leave it like that we would need to we would need to append a prepend static so static rabbits rabbit one jpeg for example if we don't do this the the static path won't be included in our url so this this way we just say okay we have resources in our static folder but the static isn't actually part of the url so we can just say as you've seen in our browser, if we relaunch this, um, we can just say 
our URL slash rabbit slash rabbit1. If we click reload, then this time it will actually load a rabbit. And that's already our API. So very simple, but actually very cool with Ktor. I love Ktor because it uses Kotlin and I can only suggest you if you are an Android developer and you want to build backends for your clients, for, for yourself, for any app, then uh, yeah, really take a look at Ktor. It's an awesome backend. It's not that popular yet, but I'm pretty convinced that it will become more and more popular. Will take time, of course, but it's already changed quite a lot in the past and in, in a good way. Um, yeah. So definitely try it out and let's now get to the Android part and implement that in our Android app. So here I am, just an empty Jetpack Compose project and I've already also included the dependencies here. So on the one hand the Dagger Hilt plugin, here Kotlin capped and Dagger Hilt and some dependencies, the accompanist library to um, load images using coil, using uh, the network. View model scope, coroutines, um, yeah, and Dagger Hilt and Retrofit. So just to make the HTTP requests, will be a very simple app. Um, just to get these dependencies and all that initial code, just get the, the initial project down below from my GitHub repository, and then you're good to go. So let's actually start to set up two packages. As I said, it will be very simple. Won't set up any super special package structure here. Um, I will just have one for data and one for DI, dependency injection. And we are going to start in the data package. So we create our retrofit API interface. So let's actually first create the rabbit class which we can essentially just copy from our server. So let's open that. Um, just copy this rabbit class and paste it in Android Studio in our data class. So just control V, paste this. Yes, I add that to Git. We can go to the package name, press Alt plus Enter and change this to the right package name. Remove the serialization stuff because we don't need this here. I think I use JSON here, yeah, just <laughs> because I just copied over the dependencies for retrofit. Um, doesn't really matter. Mm. Now we have the, retro, uh, the retrofit class, the rabbit class, and we want to implement the retrofit interface. So we go to the data package, new Kotlin class of file, select interface and call this rabbits API, press enter, and here, if you know retrofit, we just define the routes that we have, that we need to access our, our backend. That is just one route here, slash, uh, at get actually. And we define the, the actual route, which is random rabbit. Actually, slash random rabbit. The function for that will be a suspend function. So just in a coroutine, asynchronously, get random rabbit doesn't take any parameters and we can just return such a rabbit that we just created. Then let's go to our DI package, new Kotlin class of file, select object called app module. That's going to be the place in which we provide our retrofit um, API interface. So that will be a module. We install it into the singleton component. So all these dependencies will be singletons and then we're going to have the typical provide functions. So it provides a singleton dependency and we call it provide um, rabbits API, returns a rabbits API and we can say return uh, retrofit that builder at converter factory. So we just did, we just say, hey, we want to use the, the JSON library to parse the JSON content here. So JSON converter factory at create. And we want to uh, specify a base URL, which I will just hard code here. Mm. Or you, we can also just put it in the, the API interface here using a companion object. Const val base URL is equal to HTTP slash co, uh, colon slash slash 
this will be the same IP you have actually um, copied before. Whoops. I think it is this one, right? Quickly check. Uh, routing. Rabbit route. Yes, exactly. And also, we need the port here. And then we can go to app module, say rabbits API dot base URL, dot build, and dot create, and we pass our rabbits API double colon class at Java. And that's all we need for the retrofit interface. Let's do the next step, which is defining a view model in which we actually call our function and provide the data for the UI. I'll just put that in my root package. New class called main view model. Um, actually, we also need to set up dagger hilt, but let's first do the view model stuff. I'll select file and I'll use my live template hilt view model, which will just set up the default constructor for hilt view models. You won't have this live template most likely, so you have to type this by hand. I'll call it a main view model. It will take a private val API, which is our rabbits API. And then let's see what we have in here. We definitely need a class for the state for our UI. So data class rabbit state, which will contain the current rabbit, which is initially null. So let's set it to null. And it will contain an is loading boolean, which is false initially. Then we can say VM state, which is also a live template you won't have. If you want to find out how I set up these live templates, then uh, just search on my channel for that, like Philip Lackner live templates Android Studio or so. Then, uh, yeah, that's a video where I show exactly that. Um, I'll call this just state. That will be of tab rabbit state and initialized with an empty rabbit state. Can remove this and then we will have a function to get a random rabbit. What will this function do? Well it will launch a coroutine in view model scope. So view model scope that launch and in here we're going to have a try and catch block so in case something goes wrong with our API call if we don't have internet or so then I will just log the exception here. I won't do any specific error handling or display that in our UI because that's such a simple app. The tag will be main view model and we can attach our exception here. If we have an exception we want to set the state at value to state at value copy we set is loading to false. Um, before we make the actual network request, we want to set is loading to true. So standard value that copy is loading true. Then we say state at value is state at value copy. Um, this time we set the rabbit to our API get random rabbit and is loading to false again. And because this of course delays our coroutine we have some, uh, yeah, just some delay in which we can show progress bar. And that is already it here for the view model. Let's just call this function in the init block. Um, get random rabbit. So we just initially load one rabbit. And yeah, now only the UI is missing and the dependency injection is set up. Let's go on with that. Just creating an application class. Uh, rabbit app. Inherits from application. And we annotate this with Hilt Android app. We need to register that in our manifest. So let's open that. We say name a rabbit app. When we're already here, we can also add the internet permission. And because we work with our local, our local backend here, and we don't use HTTPS, we also need one additional config here, which is uses clear text traffic. We need to set that to true. In a production app that should be set to false, so you only allow encrypted traffic using HTTPS, but 
since we don't have that here we need to explicitly allow that we can close this again we can close this and actually go to main activity and just set up our ui now so we're going to have a column in which you just put our different composables our image um, title text description text and button and progress bar that column will have a modifier to fill the whole screen size and I will add some padding of 32 dp and can we format that yes we can then in that column we will need a reference to the view model type main view model which is equal to hilt view models hilt view model and to be able to do that we need to annotate this activity with android entry point so just that dagger hilt is able to inject dependencies in this android component which in activity is in the end and then we can get the rabbit state using our view model that state that value that rabbit and we can get the is loading state using view model state value is loading. And if that rabbit now is not equal to null, then we want to show our rabbit data. So first of all, we want to show an image of the rabbit that we just load from our API. We use the call library for that, so we can say image. Um, the painter will be remember image painter that comes from the coil library with which we can easily now load a remote image we can say the data is our URL so rabbit dot image URL and we can also make this fade a little bit by adding a builder where we set cross rate to true content description could just be rabbit for example rearrange this a bit and we need an annotation here, I think. Yes. Now we can move this to main activity. Then we will have some space below that image. Let's set, set the height to 8dp. We want a text for the rabbit name. So rabbit.name. I'll set the font weight to bold and the font size to let's say 20 sp import sp format that we can take the spacer put it down below we can have another text for the description rabbit does that description mm, something that comes down below yeah we want to have another spacer um, and then outside of this lat block we want to show the button so we always want to show the button no matter if the loading was successful or not so we can say button on click will be view model double colon get random rabbit so we just call the get random rabbit function and i want to align that to the end so modifier is modifier.align alignment.end and the text of the button will be get um, or just next rabbit. Okay, and one more thing for the progress bar. Let's have another spacer with a height of ATP. And then we have a check if we're actually loading. If we are, we show a circular progress indicator. And that should actually be it. So I think this Android site should be pretty clear if you're somehow familiar with Android and my projects. So that's why I went through this a little bit faster because that's also not the focus of this video. Uh, but let's actually launch this and try it out. So that's my old app. Let's wait until the other one is actually built. So let's hope everything goes well and nothing crashes. And we don't get anything. Oh, we do. Yeah, so that looks fine. We could have centered this, of course. Um, I wasn't sure if my API was running, so make sure that your server is actually running. We can click Next Rabbit. And yeah, we get another rabbit. These images are very large here. So one is even like like 20, uh, yeah, 26 megabytes or so. 
course, in a real backend, you would compress this for such a simple display, but I was too lazy to do that. So that should actually now work fine. And call also caches these. So when these are um, loaded once, then you, these will display a lot faster. But that works pretty cool. So if we now take a look in our backend, then you can see all these get requests. That is this call logging feature. Just whenever a client accesses a route, then it will log this here. Very useful. So that is actually it for this video. If you want to learn more about Kator, so if you learn how to how to use a database in that, so to persistently save data, like MongoDB specifically, if you want to learn how you can use authentication in Kator, if you want to learn how you can actually um, communicate with real-time traffic in Kator, so with WebSockets, then you really want to check out my courses down below. I have one course about Kator that shows you how to just build yeah, the typical REST API so MongoDB, authentication, um, hashing passwords, and all that stuff that um, belongs to typical REST API. And I have another course, the DoodleCon course, which um, is in which we will basically build a real-time drawing game, so a real-time scribble game, and that will use WebSockets. So that fully focuses on this WebSocket feature of Kator, which is comparable, for example, to a Firebase snapshot listener, so the real-time um, listen of Firebase that will notify you about changes and yeah you really want to check these um, courses down below I will also give you a discount code here because you finished watching this video and you're obviously interested in Kator and that is Kator underscore lovers if you use that you will get 15% off of my both um, Kator courses enjoy that and thanks for the support Apart from that, I wish you an excellent day and I see you back in the next video again. Bye bye.